Good evening. Good evening. Hope you all had a chance today to go out and enjoy the beautiful day. Uh, what an incredible gift from God. We remember and celebrate All Saints Day. We'll remember the saints who have gone before us and more importantly, praise God for the gifts he has given to us and those gifts shown in them. Uh, let's begin our worship with the singing of our opening hymn. Assembly of the godly. 
Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pressure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their hearts and to their swords in their hands. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetid arms. To execute on them the judgment written. This is an honor for all those godly ones. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the blessing of peace from above, and for the salvation of all the saints, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of all creation, for the well-being of the communion of saints on earth, and for the unity of all those blessed by Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer, and for all the holy ones who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. My fellow saints, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. You bless us now by your word and spirit. You will bless us for eternity with joy in your presence. Grant us hearts to receive and share all the blessings you so freely give. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our first reading. The first reading is found in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? From where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will shelter them with His presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is found in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own, for then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once 
for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Hallelujah. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us look to Jesus, the founder and protector of our faith. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Together we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God. Be thou not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And when he was crucified also, he was for us to die, and he was raised from the dead on the third day, and he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures. And sit at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
and peace to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll always remember going to chapel at Concordia Seminary for the very first time. Uh, now, the Burmeister family is notorious for being late. Uh, I remember growing up, one of my parents once joked, you're only late if the opening hymn has already begun. So this time, I do everything in my power not to be late. And I'm successful. I get to chapel ten minutes before it starts. It's a victory on that dreary, cloudy day. Uh, rejoicing in that victory, I walk in the front doors and step into the narthex. And there in front of me, I see a large group of people all talking with each other and discussing. It's warm, friendly, and inviting. It has the sense of intimacy and belonging. And in the middle of that room, where all these people are gathered, is the baptismal font. It's a great reminder as you step into the building, the first step of faith, that is what brought you into the faith, God's gift of baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit. God creating faith in you, God giving his gifts to you, and I can't help but think of that. And I think about how baptism has called me into this family of God, and I'm filled with joy over that sense of belonging and community. I think about that as I talk to others, and before you know it, it's time for chapel to begin. So I follow my friends inside, and I find my seat. And as I sit there, I find myself staring at the stained glass window that's located right above the altar. Uh, the church that I attended growing up didn't have a stained glass window, so I'm drawn to it and almost mesmerized by it. It's beautiful. And that stained glass window is split into two sides. On the left stands Timothy, on the right Titus, and in between them stands a cross. Timothy and Titus both stand firm as if not to be moved with their eyes focused on that cross. And if you look carefully, you can see a stone at Timothy's feet. That's because Timothy was a martyr. That is, he died for the faith by being stoned to death. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, that we just heard, says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's Timothy. And that's incredible. I continue to stare at that stained glass window, and after a few minutes, a, a question pops into my head. Is my faith as strong as theirs? It's in that moment that something inside of me changes. I've already forgotten about the baptismal font and the family of God gathered here today, and that feeling of belonging starts to dissipate. And I begin to wonder if my faith is strong enough. I begin to wonder if I belong here. Because after all, if those are the saints, what am I? Well, today as a church, we celebrate All Saints Day. We remember those who have died in the faith and have gone to be with the Lord. And it's a day that is filled with a mixture of emotions. There's sadness. Those friends and loved ones that we cherish are no longer here on earth. We no longer hear their laughter or see their radiating smile. And we try to hold on to their presence, but the only thing we can hold on to is the memories. And sometimes it feels like even that is fading. But there's also joy. While those loved ones are not here, they're in heaven, a place that is so joyful that words can't even do it justice. We simply must hold on to what Scripture has revealed to us, a place where the saints are all circled around the throne of God, 
a place where God wipes away all tears, a place where there is no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. In fact, the only crying out is the people. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You know, we like to say that when a loved one has died, that they've gone to a better place. And that's an understatement. There is no place better than dwelling in the presence of God. So while there is sadness, there's also indescribable joy. But you know, I can't help but wonder if there's a third emotion that can occur today. Intimidation or wonder. I see all the saints that have gone before us, what some might call the heroes of the faith, and I wonder if I belong in this group. There's Timothy and Titus standing firm in that stained glass window, eyes ever focused on the cross. And let's not forget about the other people of the faith. Abraham, Moses, David, so many heroes. And there are the people who have meant a lot to you. There's your mom, who always made sure that you and your siblings are at church. There's dad who always made sure you prayed before a meal and gave thanks to God. There's that friend whose life always reflected the grace of Christ to all who met them. Feels like a dynamic group, doesn't it? These are the heroes of the faith. These are the people that look like they belong. And then there's some of us right here on earth. There's the child in the back of the service gripping a coloring book and a little bag of Cheerios who can't stop saying mine. There's the mom next to the child who's trying so hard to keep their little one quiet and behaving, just wondering how their parents did it, just wondering if they can make it through today. Or how about the man who rolls his wedding ring in his hand wondering why his marriage had to end in divorce? Or how about that person who quietly battles their alcohol addiction, wondering if they're strong enough? Yes, there are the saints who have gone before us who are now in heaven, and then there's us. It seems to be this little band of misfits right here on earth, and you can't help but feel intimidated by some who have gone before you and wonder if you have what it takes. Yeah, I'll never forget my first time going to chapel at Concordia Seminary. You know, but I'll also never forget my second time going to chapel either. I found my seat in the sanctuary, and once again I found myself drawn to that stained glass window. This time it was a sunny day. The sunlight shone through the windows and onto the people sitting in front of me. Some were covered in a tint of red, others in a tint of blue, and a third group in a tint of yellow. I found that that was a reminder. So often we focus on the saints themselves rather than seeing through them. And to see through them is to see Jesus. Jesus, the one who blesses them, who does good for them, and then does good through them in the world. For you see, what makes the saints great is not their actions, but it's Christ's actions. It's not their love, but it's Christ's love. And Christ's love shines through the old saints and into the new saints. Each person in the pews were colored with a different light. That is, each person was impacted by a saint in a unique, remarkable way. And on this All Saints Day, we remember how some of the saints have had an incredible, unique impact on each one of us. And that is wonderful. 
But as you see your loved one, never forget to see through them. See Jesus, the one who blesses them, who does good for them, and then did good through them in the world. Because after all, that's what Matthew invites you to see today. He invites you to look through the saints and see Jesus, the one who blesses them, who does good for them and does good through them. And the Beatitudes begin with beautiful gospel. But if we aren't careful, we'll miss it. It's intertwined with where Jesus is and who Jesus is speaking to. Uh, Jesus, Jesus has just recently called his disciples. He's called Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And all of these people are fishermen. You know, a fisherman was someone who was not someone educated enough to be a scribe or powerful enough to be a Pharisee. They're just simple people. Fisherman is the kind of person you walk by and often overlook. But Jesus calls them. He calls the people in the world who many would describe as unremarkable. And our scene has Jesus traveling with more unremarkable people. Notice that he's not in the temple with the scribes or the priest that is the top of society, but he's on the top of the mountain traveling with the lowly, average, and unextraordinary. Our text says, seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. So Peter, Andrew, James, John, and all those who believed circled around Jesus, and what a crowd it was. Some are poor, others are mourning, some are struggling for righteousness, and others are fighting for peace calls them together and speaks these incredible words. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. Your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Those who mourn, who long for the kingdom of God, who struggle for peace, who are persecuted in the faith, these are the ones that God chooses to bless. Certainly not because of what they've done, but it's what because of what Christ Jesus will do for them. Jesus will take upon himself the darkness of the world, its sin and God's wrath, that he might rise as the light of the world and shine through them God's grace for them. Jesus shines through them to make them saints. Jesus makes them holy in their helplessness and sainted in their suffering. God's people are illumined by Jesus, the light of the world. And today, Jesus speaks those incredible words to you. These beautiful blessings of the Beatitudes are yours, dear saints. He makes you blessed. You don't deserve the gifts of God, but that's why it's called a gift. And you can be sure that if Christ Jesus gives these gifts to these lowly people, you know that he means to give it to you too. On this All Saints Day, the Beatitudes remind us how in Christ, how God in Christ claims people 
who are frail, humble, poor, mourning, and makes them his own. As you heard the Beatitudes tonight, what part of your life do you find to be illumined? Where do you see Christ Jesus shining through you? Fellow saints, sing his praise, cry out in prayer, and remember in love the work of Christ who blesses you and shines through you, who makes you his saints today. He shines through you. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, the life everlasting. Amen. thanksgiving those of our parish and our loved ones who have gone before us with faith for they were created by god to offer him praise forever redeemed by jesus god's son and filled with the holy spirit through baptism where god gave them new life they have been nourished in the company of his people through the lord's supper and the word and in his mercy god has summoned them to his presence so that they may continue in joyful service to him forever in addition to members, we also name others who were, served, who were served by this church or her pastors at this time of death and burial. Therefore, we remember these all on this holy day. Eric Richardson, William Milborn, Gary Herzog, Dorothy Anderson, Christina Obenchain. Jody Williams, Lorraine Gooley, and Betty Smith. Blessed are they that die in the Lord from now on, for they will rest from their labors and their deeds will follow them. Let us pray. In joyful expectation for the resurrection of the body to life, 
We remember before you, O Lord, all those who have gone before us in the faith, whom we pause now to name in our hearts. We offer thanksgiving for the gift of faith, and we hold fast to the certainty of your promises. May their memory among us be blessed, and may we follow their footsteps of faith to your eternal presence in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. Our prayers today will pray for Dick Damerman, who has surgery in the upcoming weeks. Uh, we'll pray for John Robel's brother, who's uh, still in recovery. Uh, we'll pray for peace as it's taking longer than expected. Uh, we'll pray for those grieving for Elizabeth Riggins and family at the death of her father, Leroy Brown. We'll pray for the family of Mary Peters, a uh, cousin of Rich Peters who passed away from COVID. Pray for the family of Max Guide, uh, Carol Pijanowski's father, who was called home to be with the Lord. And we'll pray for uh, my friend Colin Moon, uh, we had a stroke a few hours ago who's being rushed to the hospital for uh, emergency brain surgery. Sorry, I held that in all service. Excuse me. Uh, please stand. <clears throat> and let's pray. Uh, gracious Lord, we pray for all the nations of the world, that their leaders see with your eyes of justice and mercy the needs of their people and that your blessed ones represent you among every nation, tribe, people, and language. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless us with your mercy. For your body, the Christian church on earth, that we see in our service the coming of your kingdom into our world, and that our love for others reflects the love of our Savior uh, has shown to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless us with your mercy. For all families of our congregation, that in seeing the poor, the hungry, the oppressed, and the grieving, we see you in them, and welcome the opportunity to bless others as you have first blessed us. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who grieve the death of those they love, that their hearts be filled with your peace, and their eyes of faith behold you until the day of our reunion at the throne of the Lamb, when we shall see you face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless us in your mercy. Father, we pray for those sick. We pray for those with health concerns for Will, Cindy, Matt, Pam, Carol, Vince, Wayne, Matt, Rodney, Darren, Kim, Steve and Sandy, Elwood, Paul, Marge, and Colin. We pray for Dick Dannerman, who will have surgery in the upcoming weeks. We ask that you bless the doctors and the hands that care for him and for a successful surgery. We pray for those fighting for the cancer. We pray for Amy, Madge, Margaret, Donna, Teresa, Tim, and Juan, and Jan as she is in hospice. We pray for those grieving for Elizabeth Riggins and family, for Mary Peters and her family, and for the family of Max Guy. We pray that they may receive your blessing through the healing that comes by your power alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless us with your mercy. Into your care, O Lord, we entrust all for whom we pray, always relying upon your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, let us confess our sins to him, recognizing what a blessing it is indeed that we are gathered here in his gracious presence. Let us pray. Help me, Lord, for I am in great need. My sins are to you to count. My burdens are to you that I carry. I call out to you for mercy. I ask for your forgiveness, full and free, as the Father who loves me and sent Jesus to die for me. Forgive me all my sins. By your Holy Spirit, create in me a pure heart, that I may worship you in the company of all your saints. As your word has promised, bless me as your own. Amen. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You have been blessed by Jesus with the purity of heart that comes from sins forgiven. Now we see God with eyes of faith. One day we shall see him face to face. This is all because of his mercy, which he poured out upon you and all who trusted in him. As your pastor, it is my privilege to announce this grace to you and as he has commanded. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We pray. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had great mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. We rejoice that by his death and resurrection you have called us to be your saints and have promised to bless us forever. Gathered in the name of Jesus, we ask you, O Lord, to bless us as we share in the body and blood of Christ, along with all your saints, both those who wait for you on earth and those who are in heaven with you. We praise your holy name as we say, Amen. Amen. Blessing you, glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, to you, O Lord, forever and ever. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. <laughs> Jesus gifts are for you, and what a blessing that is. Uh, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.